push on with the program and the item on the post uh, lunch menu right now is uh, developing on polka dot and it uh, will be a virtual discussion that uh, will be given by Bob Laboon, who is the head of education and grants at Web3 Foundation. Good afternoon, Bob. I'm not too sure with what time zone you're in right now, but it's good afternoon from us here in South Africa. Yes, it's actually a few minutes past noon here in Switzerland. So uh, good afternoon works as well here. All right, fantastic. Okay, so we're in similar time zone. So I'll uh, hand it over to you then to do your thing. All right, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so, so hi everyone, my name is Bill Laboon. I'm going to discuss uh, developing on Polkadot today. So I um, uh, imagine not everyone here is uh, familiar uh, with Polkadot. So we'll start off with a, uh, just a discussion of what it is, uh, what makes developing on it uh, different and how you can start developing on it. So uh, just a very brief introduction. Uh, this is me, uh, I won't, spend very long in it because I actually don't like this picture of myself very much. Uh, I work at the Web3 Foundation, which is the foundation that helps uh, shepherd Polkadot and the decentralized internet. But before this, I taught computer science at the University of Pittsburgh uh, for about five years. So what is Polkadot? Well, Polkadot is a heterogeneous multi-chain that connects and secures blockchains with pooled security and interoperability. Uh, now this can seem like a lot of jargon, but really all it means is that uh, Polkadot is a connection, a series, a, a, a group of custom built blockchains that uh, are all interoperable with each other and share security with each other. So Polkadot is not a blockchain. It's actually uh, a layer zero, as we call it. So you may be familiar with layer twos on Ethereum that are built on top of Ethereum. Uh, a layer zero blockchain is essentially a protocol for people to make their own blockchains. And so Polkadot allows hundreds of different custom built blockchains that can run you know, their own programs on top of these, their own smart contracts, their own um, you know, other features uh, on, on top of them. And yet they can all interact uh, with each other. So just to give some, some background, because I'll probably use these words quite a bit in the presentation, there's really two main parts to the Polkadot architecture. So there's the relay chain, which is a connecting chain. It connects all of these other chains, provides them security, and allows them to interoperate with each other. Uh, and then parachains. So these are third-party blockchains, uh, and we'll talk about how the, these can be developed, that uh, connect to Polkadot. So you think of the relay chain as really just you know, a coordinator. People don't use the, the relay chain nearly as much as the, the parachains, these you know, uh, independent blockchains that are part of the Polkadot ecosystem. This is really how we're different from a lot of other uh, blockchain ecosystems out there is that it's actually a whole collection of blockchains. Uh, you know, there are dozens of different parachains uh, currently running on, on Polkadot and even more on our Canary network, Kusama. So our Canary network, Kusama, that's where we put out new features, new versions of the software before it gets pushed out uh, to the, the Polkadot mainnet. So if we think of how this looks, uh, it's something like this. So we have you know, a collection of blockchains, uh, part of Polkadot. We also have uh, Kusama, uh, and we are working right now on direct interactions between these, uh, but there are also bridges to other blockchains. Um, so uh, Bitcoin, for instance, via Interlay, uh, via Axelar, uh, we have uh, from the Moonbeam parachain, we have connections to all kinds of different other blockchains. We're working on, a, there's a team working on Snowbridge, which is a direct connection to Ethereum. So really you can think of Polkadot as not just, you know, its own ecosystem, but also a way of connecting lots of other uh, ecosystems into it. Because a key part of what Polkadot brings to the table, I think there's a lot more, uh, we don't have a lot of time to get into it, but there's a lot more that Polkadot brings to the table, is this blockchain interoperability. 
So you may have, you know, a, a, for instance, a smart contract parachain that wants to interact with an insurance focused parachain or an NFT focused parachain or an IoT focused parachain. And you actually can make transactions and interact uh, with these other uh, blockchains. So just to give an example, you know, you may want to uh, you know, operate a, a robot somewhere. You can do this with the Robonomics parachain and you want to pay for it via, via Bitcoin. All you have is Bitcoin. You can use Interlay to uh, bring your Bitcoin into the Polkadot ecosystem. You then may use Moonbeam or, or Akala or Mangata or any uh, some other parachain to swap this Bitcoin, wrapped Bitcoin for um, you know, a token for the you know, Robonomics token and then actually use the, the, the Robonomics uh, um, uh, Robonomics parachain. So I already mentioned, you know, we can have these blockchains that are custom built, right? They're, they're optimized for a specific purpose. So you may have, you know, a smart contract parachain, for instance, that is, its focus is to be as much like developing on Ethereum as possible, uh, right? Which would you know, allow you to use your Ethereum tools. And that is Moonbeam. You may have a parachain that is uh, focused on uh, you know, IoT and interacting with real world devices. So that's, that's nodal uh, or Robonomics. You may have a parachain that's focused on uh, prediction markets like Zeitgeist. Uh, and you, know, you, could, you don't have to have smart contracts on top of it, but rather it's built specifically for the needs of that application at the blockchain level, right? So you can optimize things you know, much more than you can if you're operating within the confines of a smart contract system. Now, if you are interested in just building a smart contract, you also can do that, right? You can uh, you know, just build on top of one of these uh, projects. But I would say the, the, the cool thing with a real differentiator in Polkadot is uh, Substrate, which is a framework that allows you to build your own blockchains. So this lets you focus on developing just the, the, the rules for your blockchain. You don't have to worry about your know, data storage. You don't have to worry about you know, connecting new nodes, uh, but rather just say, hey, what do I want in my blockchain? And then add it, right? You wanna wor worry about the focus you know, for your blockchain. So Parity, the initial developers of Substrate uh, have a lot of experience building uh, blockchain nodes. They did it for, they built Bitcoin, built Zcash, built Ethereum nodes, uh, node software rather. And you realize there are a lot of things that are just uh, used in all of these. So it's very similar to you know, Ruby on Rails uh, or Django. Uh, you know, you, if you're developing a website, you don't want to have to focus on, well, how do I handle URL parsing? Uh, how do I, you know, where do I store data? You know, all of this stuff, every website is going to have to do. So you can just build on top of these frameworks right, and uh, take advantage of these, you know, very common things that, that are used elsewhere. And Substrate is the same idea for blockchains. You can build your own blockchain on, on uh, top of it. And Polkadot itself is actually written in Substrate. So, you know, the, the, the relay chain, uh, the systems, the parachains, they're built with Substrate. But Substrate can actually be used for all kinds of different things. You don't have to use a uh, you don't have to make a parachain with it. If you would like to make your own, what we call solo chain, that's also possible with Substrate. It is a generic blockchain building framework uh, written in Rust. So how it works, again, very high level overview. There are numerous palettes, or these are essentially libraries that you can add to your runtime. And your runtime is code that's actually stored on the blockchain. Uh, that describe the rules of that blockchain. It's actually a WebAssembly blob if you're uh, interested in, in the details here. So you decide when you're building a blockchain, well, I want to have atomic swap functionality. I want to have sudo. I want to have the ability to have an identity service. I want to have an EVM, an Ethereum virtual machine. I want to have a staking system. There are a lot of these by default, they come with the standard substrate uh, uh, release. And you can you know, add which ones you want or you know, not include ones you don't want or write your own if you want something very uh, specific, right? So now that you've developed this, uh, you can run it in this you know, more generic uh, uh, node or host as we call it. Uh, think of it, I like to think of it as sort of a virtual machine. And you now have that runtime. You don't have to worry about you know, connecting with other uh, 
other nodes, right? There's already software written that will allow you to connect it. There's already software written uh, that will allow you to interpret this WebAssembly and to come to consensus, all of this stuff uh, that's already built in. So again, you can focus on the rules of your blockchain, what makes it different from other blockchains instead of focusing uh, coding time on what is the same as so many other blockchains out there. So when you get substrate, it actually comes with something called the substrate template node or node template. Uh, this is a working out of the box substrate node with simple administrative governance uh, called sudo, which basically means one account can do anything. Uh, you can change this, of course. You can add and remove pallets and you know, change the blockchain to what uh, you want to do or create your own uh, uh, your own modules uh, if you have very specialized needs. So the great thing about this, you know, as a software developer, I think it's always best to start with something that's already working and then build on it instead of building something entirely from scratch. So you can do this, right? You can build uh, your own parachain, which is going to be a little bit more difficult than writing a smart contract, but gives you perfect technical freedom. Uh, at the far end, you can write smart contracts in the Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, if you want to write a Solidity uh, smart contract or using some other EVM language uh, like Viper or LLL, then that's also uh, possible. We have several parachains that allow that. We have a native smart contract language called Inc, uh, which is Rust-based. Uh, but any uh, language that can compile down to WebAssembly actually can be used as a, um, a language to create smart contracts in Polkadot. And you're sort of in the middle here, you can write your own palette, you can, which is a library. So if you have a particular feature that you want, that you want to add to another parachain, uh, you, you can do that and you know, do a pull request to have that added. So the nice thing about developing on Polkadot is you can work at any of these levels, right? Depending on what you need, depending on what your project needs. If you just have you know, a relatively simple smart contract and you can write a smart contract in one of several languages. If you have uh, more specific needs, but ones that are mostly met by another parachain, you just develop another palette. Uh, or if you have some really interesting far out stuff there, you need a lot of technical freedom and a lot of uh, adjustment at the blockchain level, you can develop your own parachain. And actually one of the interesting things here is that since we do have a Rust-based smart contract programming language, although we also support others, you can go the, the, you know, the entire way, right? You can start with a smart contract written in a Rust-based DSL, uh, called ink you then can move on maybe if that's not quite enough for you build a palette and then all the way to building your own parachain and you can do all of this with rust right you don't have to learn different languages at different levels of the stack which i think is i think is 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 really interesting right that you can move up and down uh, using the same language once you've developed your own parachain security is really easy so if you plug in essentially to the polka dot network uh, your chain is just as secure as any chain on um, uh, in Polkadot that's you know protected by the Polkadot relay chain. So how this works, you know, in a nutshell, is remember that the WebAssembly code that describes the rules for your blockchain, the runtime, you know, is it's just a blob of WebAssembly. It's a binary blob. And when your parachain connects to the relay chain, it lets the relay chain know, you know, here's my you know, binary blob. Here are the rules for my blockchain. And the relay chain actually is then in charge of ensuring that the nodes on your parachain follow the rules of this, uh, of this WASM blob that, that you specified. So really it's, it's almost like you know, putting something in escrow or asking another um, you know, team to, to uh, you know, a bigger team to make sure that you're following uh, the, the rules. So then you don't have to worry so much about 51% attacks or other you know, major problems like this because the security of your blockchain is the same as any other parachain, which is all secured by the Polkadot relay chain. Another big benefit of developing your chain on Polkadot is that it is incredibly easy to upgrade because remember all of the code for what you're doing is stored on chain. So in a traditional blockchain, so think you know, Ethereum or, or Bitcoin, uh, in order to upgrade, you need a fork, right? And you know, perhaps you know, no one follows one chain of this fork, uh, excuse me, one part of this fork, uh, but that fork still needs to occur. You need to change the rules of the runtime. 
uh, for the, the state transition function, uh, as, as we call it. You know, what are the rules for, for going to a new block? Uh, and with a legacy system, right, you have to say at some point, all right, I'm going to start, we'll all agree at block, you know, 500,722, we're all going to start using this new version of the software. But with Polkadot and with any sub, uh, excuse me, any blockchain built on substrate, since the runtime is actually inside the block, we just need to have, you know, governance or however your system has, has set it up. Say, hey, starting from this block, we're going to start using some new run, a uh, new runtime, some new code, and this code, uh, we just say, you know, we put in that. All right, starting at this block, we're going to use it uh, with Polkadot. We have to have all dot holders agree on it, but you may have different rules for your particular parachain or your uh, whatever blockchain you create. Uh, so you can see here, sort of the, at the bottom, the way Polkadot works in, in pink is then. So once we agree that you know, at starting at block 105, we will use code B and not code A, it will automatically be enacted, right? So it's very easy to upgrade. It has happened dozens of times on Polkadot Kusama. It is a very regular process. I would say every six weeks to two months, uh, new features are added, new code is added on the po uh, Polkadot relay chain. So just as a you know, overview, uh, the, the benefits of developing on the Polkadot, you, know, you have very high throughput, right? You know, uh, because you don't have everything stuck on a single, uh, uh, you know, a, a single chain, but rather you know, you've got heterogeneous sharding. You've got uh, all kinds of different chains that are very efficient and very scalable. Uh, you actually have explicit on-chain governance. We didn't have time to go into this, but essentially all changes are voted on by dot holders. So if the network wants to add a feature, it actually has to be voted on by dot holders and, and approved. There's no uh, your proof of work. It is a proof nominated proof of stake system. Uh, the amount of electricity that the entire Polkadot network uses is less than seven houses uh, here in Switzerland, at least. I don't know uh, for other countries, but if we take Switzerland as, as an example, um, set less than seven houses worth for this, you know, like very, very large network that's handling thousands and thousands of transactions. Um, we have very low cost of building because of this, you know, very uh, modular and easy to use uh, system called Substrate. Uh, blockchains can interoperate with each other uh, with cross-chain messaging. It's very customizable from very different levels, right? We already talked about all from smart contracts to parachains. And we actually have an on-chain treasury that allows dot holders uh, to vote on who receives funding. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in this next section here. Because there are a lot of different funding opportunities if you were interested in building on Polkadot. Right? So from an off-chain perspective, uh, Web3 Foundation, my, uh, my employers, uh, have the, the grants program which allows you, if you're interested in building something open source for the entire ecosystem, you can start here at grants.web3.foundation. Uh, this is a, a very popular uh, grants program. It's generally used for very small things that are useful for the entire ecosystem. Uh, I just saw a statistic that 60% of all parachains started with a Web3 Foundation grant. So as head of education and grants, I'm very, very proud of that. Everything is done on GitHub and is transparent, so it's very developer friendly. Uh, we have Square One. So if you're looking to build something on Polkadot, but you're not sure where to go, or you don't think it's a good fit for grants, the Square One will help you find the right place. And for really uh, you know, hardcore people that are looking for full spectrum support for building a parachain, we have the Substrate Builders Program, which is run by Parity. Uh, on chain, we have treasury proposals. Uh, we have tips, which are, so we already mentioned, I mentioned treasury proposals. It allows dot holders to vote on which projects are deserving of funds. Uh, so you can give a, give a proposal. There are you know, always at least, uh, you know, at least 10 or 12 uh, discussions about pro treasury proposals going on on Polkadot and, and more on Kusama. We have tips, which are very small amounts of dot that are uh, given to people if you see that they're doing something cool. Uh, or bounties, which are essentially RFPs. Uh, we can say on chain that the net, the, excuse me, the ecosystem needs something. And then uh, we have curators who can find and you know, interact uh, with people and approve what, what they have done. And they then can sign off uh, on the bounties. So there are a lot of different funding opportunities, both off chain and on. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm at Bill Laboon. 
uh, on Twitter. Uh, every day I tweet out the Polkadot Digest of what's happening uh, in the Polkadot ecosystem. Every work day, I should say, I do take the weekends off. Uh, and there are a few resources I have on this site. The Polkadot Wiki is our ground source of truth. We have use.inc if you're interested in learning about Inc, uh, the smart contract programming language, and substrate.dev uh, if you're interested in building on Substrate. And I know uh, we have uh, there at the conference, uh, James Preston from Zeitgeist uh, Parachain wearing a Polkadot Zeitgeist shirt. So unfortunately, since I can't be there uh, in person, but if you are interested in asking about building with Substrate and building in the Polkadot uh, uh, network, you can uh, please feel free to uh, reach, out, reach out to him. I'm sure you'll see him around in his Polkadot shirt. All right, well, thank you very much. I do hope that I have, uh, whet your appetite for learning uh, and perhaps building more about and perhaps building on Polkadot. Thanks so much. Bill.